In this video, I will explain um, the ex an example on the textbook, so which is the example 3.4 on page 59. So this example shows you actually how practically you can design a low-pass low Butterworth filter to filter out a noise with a roughly known uh, frequency. So it is known that you have a signal uh, measured from a pressure sensor, so which is a voltage. So this voltage reflects uh, the pressure we measured uh, at a frequency uh, smaller than 3 Hz. And we also found out uh, this uh, signal is actually coupled with a noise which is at 60 Hz. So obviously this noise is from the electricity system. So the question is to design a first-order uh, Butterworth filter to remove the noise. So you can see this is actually a practical uh, design problem. And because we know the signal is actually at a very low frequency and uh, the noise we want to remove, it, uh, it is at uh, 60 Hz. So obviously we want the low, pass, the low frequency uh, signal to pass and to remove the high frequency, the relative high frequency of the noise. So in this case, we need a low pass uh, first order Butterworth filter. So here is the um, circuit diagram of the first order low pass Butterworth filter. So in the exam, um, I will give you this uh, diagram, but uh, the solution of uh, this uh, circuit so I would not provide you that. That means either you have to do, uh, either you can me you memorize the solution, or you should be able to derive it. So um, there could uh, it is possible of I put I ask you to derive the solution of the Butterworth filter using the AC circuit analysis technique. To save time here, so I will directly give you the, the solution of the circuit. So you can see two formulas here. So first one is the magnitude ratio or the magnitude of the gain of the circuit, which is uh, UO over UI. And also the second formula is the cutoff, the cutoff frequency. Because um, we just simply want to remove the 60 Hz noise, and uh, so it is straightforward to just uh, cite the DC gain or R2 over R1 to be 1. That means we don't want to uh, do any amplification of the circuit, or sorry, uh, to do any application of the signal, so we just want to remove the noise. So we will keep the desired signal to be the same magnitude, and then we remove noise. So we set R2 over R1 equal to 1. Now we need to uh, select resistance values. So because R1 will be equal to R2, and we just set, select a kilo ohm level um, resistance for both of them. So let's say R1 equal to R2 equal to 10 kilo ohm. And the next, we will pick uh, a cutoff frequency uh, because we know uh, the maximum possible frequency of the real signal is uh, 3 Hz. So for this example, the textbook just simply pick the cutoff frequency to be 3 Hz. Of course, if you desire, you can also choose a, a cutoff frequency at a different value. You can make it uh, to be slightly larger than three hertz, so that you conclude you can include all the signals. So, for instance, five hertz or ten hertz. But uh, uh, the textbook just choose three, so let's stick to the value uh, the textbook choose. So, because we can also we know also know the cutoff frequency um, equation where we have Fc 
So we can actually use the omega c, which is the angular for a cutoff frequency, to calculate the uh, the time domain cutoff frequency. So that's why actually f c is equal to two pi divided by omega c divided by two pi. So it's equal to one over two pi c r two. And this formula is equal to three hertz. So and also we know the value of R2. So we will be able to calculate <coughs> the value of uh, C, which is the capacitance. So the calculated value of C is actually 5.3 microfarad. So at this point, we have determined all the values of the three um, uh, elements in the circuit. So we finished the design of the circuit. So we have got the values of R1, R2, and C. Of course, um, for different designers, you may choose uh, different values. For instance, you can always make R1 equal to R2, but you choose uh, a different value other than 10 uh, kilo ohms. And in that case, you will get a different, cut, uh, different uh, capacitance and also um, you can also choose a different cutoff frequency. So here we choose 3 Hz. And if you do it in the final exam, you can choose a, a slightly different value. So you could make it to be slightly larger. That's fine. So that anyway, this is a design question. So there will be a, no um, universal answer for this question. So it depends on your uh, own selections of the values. Okay, now we have uh, uh, got the desired circuit, the design circuit. So next, we want to calculate uh, with the selected values of the circuit, so how much we can actually attenuate the 60 Hz noise. Okay, in order to do that, let's look at the frequency response of the circuit. So we can plot the output signal magnitude or the gain value uh, in, the, in the function of log omega. And we know for the first order low pass Butterworth filter, so at a low frequency, at a low frequency here, it will start from a, a constant gain. So that is the, the zero gain. So zero gain is just R2 or R1, right? And then, um, once it uh, go beyond the cutoff frequency, if, uh, we plot out the cutoff frequency, which is omega c here. So this cutoff frequency, in our case, we have selected to be three, right? So that's three hertz. And also know we for, we know for the first order uh, Butterworth filter, so the row off rate, in other words, the slope of this curve is actually 6 dB per octave. So here we will use the, this uh, slope value and uh, also we know our signal, the, the, the frequency is actually at uh, 60 Hz. So that means this is our frequency of um, this is the frequency of the noise that's 60 Hz. So from this point here to this point here, we can actually calculate the decrease of the gain value, right? So if we know this decrease of the gain value, and because the, no the gain, the decrease of the gain indicates how many, uh, what, uh, how many folds of the noise will be attenuated. So we just have to calculate this value in decibel and then we can use the decibel equation to calculate the attenuation level. And in order to know this uh, dB decrease, so as the speed of uh, 6 dB per octave, we need to first know, sorry, we need to first know the octave distance between 3 Hz and 60 Hz. And if we set x 
to be the number of octaves between 3 Hz and 60 Hz. So by definition of the octave, we can actually come up with the following equation. So that means between 3 and 60, so we have x number of octaves. That means so 3 times 2 to the order of x will be equal to 6, so equal to 60. So based on this formula, x can be calculated to be approximately equal to 4.3. Okay, now we know the number of octaves, and also we know the row of rate, which is 6 dB per octave. So the total attenuation ratio from, uh, or the attenuation from 3 Hz to 60 Hz will be 4.3 times 6. Okay, so this is the distance, if you look at the plot, this is the distance from 3 Hz to 60 Hz. But also we know from 0 Hz, 0 Hz to 3 Hz, which means there is also a decibel decrease right here. So we know by definition of the cutoff frequency, that's 3 dB. So that's why the total distance from the initial gain value to the 60 dB gain value, oh, sorry, the 60 Hz gain value, this guy is actually 25.9 plus 3. So that is our final attenuation, or the total attenuation. So if we replot the uh, frequency response of the gain value, so for our case, because we have chosen R1 equal to R2, that's why the initial gain value here, G0 expressed in decibel, is just equal to log g0 or log 1 so that's actually equal to 0 and also we know so the gain we have calculated that at 60 hertz so that gain the distance between the 60 hertz gain and the initial gain that's 28.9 dB right so that means the gain value here uh, at 60 Hz so that's basically minus 0 .8, 28.9 dB, right? Because the initial value here is 0. Okay, so he, now we got this uh, gain, ma gain value so by definition of the gain we can come up with this formula. So for the 60 Hz no, uh, noise signal, so for the noise, because we know the gain value at 60 Hz, which is point, minus point 28.9 dB. So by definition, that will be equal to 20 log. And then, so way out, over way in. So this voltage input is the 60 Hz noise and this is the 60 Hz noise after attenuation, right? So what we care about is this ratio. So we care about this ratio. We want to know how small the 60 Hz can be, will become after the filter. So we, ca we do the calculation. Finally, we can find out so way out becomes a very small fraction of the way in, which is 0 0.036 of the way in. That means after attenuation, the 60 Hz will be only will be reduced to a, to the 3.6 percent of its original value. So this is the answer for the second part. Okay, with that, I finished uh, the first example. And also, the, there is other, another example I encourage you to practice, so which is a practice problem from the textbook. So it is a 3.16 on page 69. 
Please do take time、uh, to practice this problem, and、uh, both problems,、uh, the one I have explained in this video, and this、uh, practice problem, are quite important. So I strongly encourage you to practice both of them for preparation of the final exam. Okay, that's all about today's video.